Hallelujah. Then I don't want to read your text while you're listening on your feet. The name of this message is entitled The Basket Case. I had to preach it because I see a few of them here tonight. You'll never know just where this comes from if you don't look in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. And if you feel like a basket case tonight, listen closely. Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church, the most carnal church that he ever had to contend with. And here's what he's saying. If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Well, there's a switch for a healing service. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas the king kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hand. Well, you can't stop there. Chapter 12, verse 1. It was at the option of the uh, one who interpreted, not interpreted, but uh, translated, rather, for interpretation would uh, leave room for error, but uh, translation's exact. The translator is the one that put the chapters and the verses in here. The original Hebrew just flows, never stops. Kind of like the Word of God always should be. Uh, so we must continue reading the first verse of the next chapter. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I'll come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it's not lawful for a man to utter. Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Verse 9, concerning the messenger of Satan that he sought God to take from him, the thorn in the flesh, prayed three times and it didn't go. Maybe he should have prayed four. Verse 9, and he said to me, that's the Lord speaking, my grace is sufficient for thee, but my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, I thank you for the reading of the word. May be rich, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, pierced to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and be a discerner of the thoughts and intents of every heart. Even now, break the yoke. Let the yoke be destroyed because of the anointing. And Lord, let every heart be open to receive in the next few moments the message of the hour. And we thank you for it. Open your heart and let Jesus in. He will remove every burden of sin. Longs to be your sweetest and dearest friend. Why don't you open your heart tonight and let His word in? Oh, take, take His hand, take His nail scarred hand, and Jesus. today. Oh, he may not pass your way again. You must open your heart tonight and let his word in. Hallelujah. 
thank God you may be seated if you can. When it comes to glorying, said Paul, I'm not going to glory in my accomplishments. I'm not going to glory in my flesh. I'm not going to glory in my education, though I was taught at the feet of Gamaliel. I'm not going to glory in my fortune or in my fame or in my name. My name will not stand after it's gone to the grave. It'll soon be forgotten, but there's one name that will be established forever. Oh, and that name, of course, is Jesus. And he placed his word even above his name. So I think we better listen for a few moments. Say amen. If I'm going to glory, I will glory in my afflictions and in my infirmities and in my troubles and my buffetings and in my humilities and the things that gets me down and my discouragements and in my disappointments and my despondency. Some said, oh, they're no good for nothing. Oh, they'll help you to glory. Hallelujah. Because you see, when you are weak, then are you strong. God have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise the base things to confound the mighty. He tears down what the world has established by things that's not even there. And pretty soon they've gone. Why is he doing all these things? So no flesh should glory in his presence. If you do something bad, you suffer that. If you do something right, you must pass the glory on to God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. The hand of the Creator is in me tonight and I cannot help but to extol his name and give his name the glory. If I'm going to glory at all, it'll have to be in my problems. Because if I think I stand, I must take heed lest I fall. There's a danger of getting old public enemy number one too riled up, too stirred up, too important. Because he'll drop you like a hot potato and you'll fall flat on your face before you realize it. Hallelujah. So tonight Paul said, I wouldn't dare to glory in all my great things that I've done because I'm expecting to get a reward in heaven for them. If I'm going to be like the Sadducees and Pharisees and stand on the street corner and make great big long prayers to be seen of men, I have my reward. I was seen of men. They heard my fancy prayer. I gloried in my ability instead of glorying in God. Seems like the only time I can ever glory in God is when I'm down and out. Seems like the only time I never praise God and give him the glory is when I'm between a rock and a hard place. Only time I can really praise him and believe him and force to trust him is when I'm standing between the devil and the deep blue sea. Hallelujah. I'm so low I can't hardly reach up to touch bottom. Scraping the bottom of the mill barrel. All the bills are due. Woe is me. I have to call on God and start glorifying his name. And pretty soon there's this faint light at the end of a dark tunnel and God starts coming through for me. Hallelujah. But every time I get to thinking I'm somebody special and I'm it and my can I do a job. Every time I get to reveling in the works of my own hands, I miss the point altogether. Salvation is not by the work of your own hands. It's by his grace he saved you and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. Why, there are some people that are so te uh, teachers and studious that uh, they would slave and work their life away if they could earn heaven by the works of their own hands. They'd rather have it that way so they wouldn't owe God nothing. But I owe him all. Here I am, Lord, come and get me. Say hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Praise the Lord. Do you love him still? So there's a lot of glorying that goes on that, uh, well, it has no future. But when you glory in your afflictions and your infirmities and in the things that gets you down, which makes you glorify God, makes you trust God, makes you believe God, why, then you dare to do it. Because after all, you can't go no lower. Say amen. When you get up on a pedestal, look out, you could fall off it. Praise my God. Now, Paul's talking about glorying in his infirmity. And he said, I want you to know that you carnal Corinthians are out 
boasting about how great you are and how good you are and how important you are and how capable you are. But if any man had a right to glory, it's me, but I won't be a fool and do it. Uh, you can get into an argument between yourselves of which one of you is the greatest. Hello. But you're not going to trap me in that trap. He said, I'll tell you the truth. The God of heaven knows that I lie not, that I was in Damascus, and the king, Aretas, sent a garrison of soldiers to surround the city because I was preaching the gospel to Jew and Gentile, so mightily convincing the Jews that Jesus was very Christ, and I was just a young convert. I had just fell off my high horse on the Damascus road. I had just bit the dust. I had just been healed of blindness. I had just had a revelation of Christ. I heard the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ come to me from heaven. I was convinced that he's the Messiah, though I fought him all the days of my life. I went there to fight, but I'll tell you that night, God surely got a hold of me. First, when I heard of some people that claimed that old-time religion was real, I said, I'll go down and take a look at the crowd. It's just as weak-minded, I feel. Walked up the steps and I peeked in the door and the devil said, don't you go in. I said, ah, oh, can't hurt me. I'll just step inside and sit as far back as I can. But something got a hold of me. Something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but I'll tell you that night, God surely got a hold of me. Ho! Oh, they sang like they meant it. They all clapped their hands. I said, it's emotion, that's all. When they get down to pray, I'll just get up and leave. I don't want to be seen here at all. Just about then, someone started to shout, and he said he knew he was saved. And all plainly could see with no reason to doubt that salvation to him the Lord gave. Just about then, that old preacher he preached, and he looked down the aisle straight at me. He told everybody how mean that I was. Didn't talk like he thought much of me. I sit in my seat just thinking that or When they all started to pray, the glory fell from glory and I rolled on the floor and I prayed there till God had his way because something had a hold of me. Something was hanging on to me. I might have went there to fight, but I'll tell you one night, God surely got a hold of me. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Ooh, glory. Now, now that I know and I don't need to doubt, for I got an experience that night, I'll never forget it as long as I live. I found out salvation was right. I said when I went out, now I can't stay very long. I must be home by nine. The power fell from heaven and I prayed and threw on the floor. I got home at three and felt fine. Because something had a hold of me. And something's still hanging on to me. Ooh, I went there to fight, but I'll tell you one night, God surely got a hold of me. Hallelujah. And Pentecost satisfies me. Hallelujah. I've crossed over Jordan to Canaan's fair land. This is like heaven to me. Hallelujah. Is it you? Paul was talking about such a thing. He said, I, I could really get to bragging on the things that's happened to me. And I was just a young convert, and I just got straightened out. And I was in Damascus preaching, and I so stirred things up there that all around the town were, was a garrison of soldiers that kept every gate in the wall, desirous to apprehend me, that they might take me away and slay me. Because by reason of my preaching, many people were turning to Jesus Christ. After all, that's scriptural. God have chosen by the foolishness of preaching the gospel to be spread, not foolish preaching. The foolishness of preaching. And you can't even send an angel to do it. You've got to do it. You must reach your fellow man with the preaching, teaching, and witnessing of the gospel that you've received. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Is it true? Ah, if an angel comes and preaches a different one, don't listen to him, said Paul. If I come next year preaching a different gospel than I did last year, don't listen to me either, said Paul. He said, if I'm going to glory, it'll be in my infirmities and not in the things that I've really felt like I've accomplished in my lifetime. Isn't it strange how the spirit world works backwards? Why? 
carnal, natural reason would say, why, put your trophies on the shelf and shine them all up and let everybody ooh and ah over what you've done. But if you really want to start glorying, do so in the problems and the weaknesses and the difficulties and the tragedies that has beset you. Because it is through these things where God gets the glory. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I received this thorn in my flesh, prayed three times with the goat, didn't go no place. Instead, I heard a voice from heaven say, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Hallelujah. So I'm going to glory in my infirmities, said Paul, because when I do, the power of Christ rests upon me. So if you've had problems today, rejoice. The power of Christ is going to come on you just as soon as you open your mouth and shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's everybody shout glory one time. Glory to God. Everybody that's had a problem today, shout hallelujah. Everyone that's had difficulty this week, say praise you, the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory. He said, I was just having such a revival. Whole city getting straightened out, turned to God. I was glorying in my infirmities and the power of Christ was all over me and keeping me alive. And the devil was so stirred up, he had demons at every wall, corner, crack, and cranny. Just like they're hanging around the outside of this building tonight, scared to death of what God's going to do in here. And that king said, whatever you do, make sure that you capture that preacher that's stirring up the hornet's nest around here and destroy him. And I was young and I was having a good time. I didn't know that you couldn't stay on the mountaintop forever. And that night, when it looked like the end of the finish and it was all over for me, God let me down. And when he let me down, I gloried. I praised. I felt power of Christ resting all over me. Because when he let me down, he didn't make a monkey out of me. And he didn't shame me. And he didn't embarrass me. I was a basket case. I was beside myself. My nerves were climbing the wall. I was fixing to die by a heathen sword. There was no escape, and yet I'd had a great time in Jesus all week long. But now I was facing death when God let me down. As a basket case, I was not embarrassed because there was a lid on the basket, and nobody knew I was in it when God let me down over the wall in my basket. Say hallelujah. And when he let me down, he didn't let me down of a bump. It wasn't a nasty landing. Gently was I let down by the hand of the Almighty, for it was for my own good, so I would not be destroyed, so I could prolong my days. And right then I couldn't understand it. I thought I should preach again tonight and have a great revival. I didn't know there's a time for everything beneath the face of the sun, a time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to sow, a time to reap, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. And I felt kind of let down. But it wasn't such a bad experience because I gloried in it. How did I felt the glory all the way through it. Nobody knew I was in the basket. There was a lid on it. He let me down easy. He did it for my own good. And old chastening seemed pleasant but grievous at the first. But afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son. Discipline is a wonderful thing. Because it grows in the individual self-discipline. We mentioned this the other night. Someone said, I don't want to be manipulated. You got the wrong word. It's not manipulation. It's discipline. And it's coming from the Almighty's hand. And with you cringe beneath the discipline, look to be let down a little bit farther in the basket. And if you still resist heavenly discipline, look out. You're a total basket case. Say amen. I was all, I'm all to pieces. 
He can pick up my bits and pieces and put them in a basket. Don't worry, if he does, he'll shake it all together and put it all back where it belongs and the Creator will recreate you. And friend, that old potter that's working a work upon the wheels and the vessel that's made of clay is marred in the hand of the potter, he is just going to make it all over again, another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. You're the vessel, you're the clay, he's the potter, and friend, he'll make your life all over again. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. There he was let down. Now, he wasn't the only one ever been let down. I see some of you folks has had that let down experience. You blamed every one of those experiences on the devil, but I think God had a hand in a few of them. But what he's done for you, he did for your own good. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I have to believe that. I have to believe that all things work together for good to them who are called according to his purpose. I believe God allows the devil to stop you and defeat you sometimes so you can mushroom and burst forth and multiply and break out somewhere else in greater abundance. You can't keep a Christian down. You can't keep a saint of God filled with the Holy Ghost in the corner. He's going to burst out at the seams someplace. Oh, blow a gasket tonight if you have to, but get ready to grow. Say hallelujah. Oh, Papa Bohusha. woo Blessed be God if you believe it's real and true. Say amen again. All right. I remember there was a couple of spies let down over Rahab's wall in Jericho in a basket. Those spies had a different message than the other ten preachers that came back of a report. Ten out of twelve said, we can't, we won't, we don't. It's a no-no. Impossible. But two came back that had been through the basket experience and confessed that it was possible if you didn't listen to them unbelieving Dalton preachers, those other ten, and listen to what we're preaching, we're able right now to go up and possess the country and take the land of Jordan to the sea. The giants may be there your way to hinder, but God will surely give us victory. Let's tackle it by faith. Brother, where they get the kind of faith like that? Brother, the king of Jericho was out to destroy them too, but God let them down. Ooh, I said he let them down in a basket. A couple of basket cases came back and said, come on. Let's go right now, and we'll take the whole country for God. Say praise God. Oh, glory. <laughs> oh, don't you love him tonight? I remember Moses was three months old, and they put him out in a little basket, floating around on the Nile River. As long as he stayed inside the Ark of Bulrushes, the crocodiles couldn't eat him, and Pharaoh's soldiers couldn't find him until Pharaoh's little daughter pulled him out of the water and raised him up in the palace of the king. Before it was over, he led three million people out of bondage because he was nothing but a basket case. Say hallelujah. There's hope for you tonight. I don't care how low down you've been and how you feel like you've been through the mill, squeezed through the keyhole. God's going to use you. God's going to raise you up. When the problem is over, the difficulty is finished, and God processes you and does the work in your life He intended when He puts you in that basket. When you come out of the basket, you're going to do something for God. Say hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. I'll tell you this much about your basket case tonight, your basket experience. As long as you don't blow your lid, God will keep your cover. Say hallelujah. I said, just don't blow your lid and God will keep you cover. Hallelujah. He'll give you cover. Do you believe he'll cover you? He covered me by his wings last night. Years ago, he covered me by his blood. Whoa, I'm covered tonight. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, Mary. The Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. That which is born of you will be born of the Holy Ghost because you're covered by the unction. I believe we need to get out of that shadow tonight. Pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That rock is a shelter for me. When my heart is overwhelmed, hide me in thy pavilion. Hallelujah. I love him. Praise him, God. Ah, yes. David put a dummy in the bed. One David, he left the bed. His daddy-in-law sent the soldiers. They beat, broke down the door and said, take him. Cut off his head. We don't want any competition to the throne. Don't matter if he is our son-in-law. Don't matter if he is in the family. There's nothing in this bed but a roll 
with goat's hair on it. What? A dummy in the bed? We thought it was David. I'd rather be a basket case than a dummy. Well, where's David? Oh, said Michael, his wife. He made me let him down the wall in a basket. And he's escaped. And he's gone out there with Samuel and Naioth. And they're having prayer meetings in the little cottage there where Samuel lives. And those cottage meetings are going on and on every night. And first of all, the first day David showed up in Naioth with Samuel, he moaned and he groaned and he boo-hooed and he cried the blues all over Samuel. Samuel said, Smart up there, boy. Snap out of it. You're not a basket case anymore. Let's get to praying. It wasn't long before Saul heard about it and he sent his uh, messengers down there to take both Samuel and David. And they looked in the windows of that building that night and saw that prayer meeting going on, kicked down the door, and as they walked across the threshold to chain the two prophets and the psalmist, power of God fell on the messengers. They fell prostrate on the floor, were slain in the spirit, rolled down the aisle, and prophesied all night long. Say hallelujah. Saul was sitting home twiddling his thumbs wondering where his army went to. And he decided he'd invest another group of messengers to go down and straighten out the first bunch of messengers. But brother, you can't straighten out these folks that's filled with the Holy Ghost. You want to be careful about hanging around them because it'll rub off on you. Say amen. That second bunch of messengers arrived at Naioth, looked into the window of the cottage prayer meeting, and it wasn't just Samuel and David anymore. All of Saul's converts were down there. They'd all left Saul's church and joined Samuel's. Look at that, said the messengers. Let's go in and take him. And as soon as they walked through the door and crossed the threshold, they too were slain in the spirit and prophesied all through the night. Hallelujah. Uh, I wish I could stop this preaching, but I feel it burning, churning, yearning, and turning. God thought it, grace brought it, Christ bought it, Satan fought it, Paul sought it, and I caught it. Hallelujah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Can't seem to find the, uh, the, the lid on it. Glory to God. It's up there somewhere. Oh, yes. I'm in a basket tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love him. Saul, waiting for his two groups of messengers, sent the third group, if you please. And the third bunch of messengers showed up to the prayer meeting. And wouldn't you know it, same thing hit them that hit the first two bunches. They went there to fight. But oh my, that night, God surely got a hold of them. And there was three times the congregation just having revival. And they, I often saw, said, I've had it up to here. I'll go down there myself and straighten this out next. Great big Saul, head and shoulders above every man in Israel, packed his valise and headed to Nioth. And he said, have you seen hiding a hair of any of my messengers? And some townsfolks whispered and said, you I'd go home now there's some strange goings on down off the down on the corner down across the tracks there's this place down there where all through the night you can hear crying and shouting and praising God and dancing and yelling and running the aisles and yeah said so was any of my boys down there Yep, we're afraid to report that it looked like some of your army with your s soldiers' uniforms as went down that way. The strangest thing about it, they never came back. Hallelujah. He said, well, I'll straighten that out. I'm headed down there myself right now. And great big shots all walked through the door of that same prayer meeting, and the Bible said that the power of God knocked him in the head and slayed him on the floor. And there he lay naked all day and night, prophesying unto God, just like all of his messengers had done. And somebody said, his Saul also among the prophets. When I was right at the height, God let me down. He said, but it didn't stop there. Because in the Hebrew original, you do not put chapters and verses. It's just one continuous word of God. And Suddenly he said, hey, after I was let down over the wall from Damascus, I escaped. And when I escaped, something began to happen to me. It's not expedient for me in the next verse. He said, doubtless the glory, I'm going to come to visions and revelations now. 
He said, when I get out of that basket, immediately after I got out of that basket, visions hit me. Revelations came upon me. Oh, I remembered things that I almost forgot. I remembered a man 14 years ago. That old man was me. And that new man was me. He said, such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Paul, someone said, well, Paul was talking about a man that he knew. He's talking about his other man. Not this old man. He don't glory in this old man. He glories in this man. If this old man outside here glories, it's in infirmities and in problems and in basket cases. But if this inside man ever glories, it glories in Jesus. Gets besides itself and begins to rejoice until it gets caught up into the heavenlies and sitting on a heavenly plane. Christ sitting in heavenly places with his church. He said, I was caught up in the heaven, the third heaven. I saw unspeakable things, which was not lawful for a man to utter. I knew that man. He said, in the body I couldn't tell, or without the other body I couldn't tell. Sounded like he was talking about himself, for sure. You know, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You go to heaven, you got to leave your carcass here. Go in your soul. Or you get a glorified body and go. But this old flesh, nothing the glory in it, cannot breathe several miles beyond the atmosphere. Very limited are you. You're getting older every day. Weaker, more decrepit, more gray hairs, wrinkles, lines, ugliness in the mirror this year than there was last year this time. Say, there's nothing really there to glory in, if you know what I mean. Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you love Jesus? He said, I was caught up and I couldn't even tell that I was out of the body, but I had to have been out of the body because the body don't go. Flesh and blood can only have the kingdom. And yet he went to the third heaven and his body didn't go, so somebody explained to me what went. His soul, his spirit went. Now, I want to explain to you something. That even though it was his soul that went, and we all agree to that now, yet when he left the body and went, he didn't know that he left the body. How much more, or rather, how much less do we have the glory about? You can leave this old shell, and it don't even matter. You can leave this old shell, and it's so unimportant, you don't even know that you lost it. Say hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. He said, I went, I was definitely in the third heaven, my body didn't go, and I couldn't tell that I was out of the body, yet I went. Now, isn't that beautiful? What Paul is saying is, he died and left the body, and didn't even know he died. He didn't know he'd left the body. And five seconds after you kicked the bucket, you're not going to know you died. The only thing that might remind you of it is you might look back on the bed and see that old, ugly-looking lump. What in the world is that thing? And suddenly you're so airy and so invisible to this world, but everything is visible to you from the supernatural world. All your senses are a thousandfold more keener. There's no dream, there's no subconscious, there's no unconscious. It's total awareness and total experience and total alertness. I saw a picture one time that thrilled me. A little old granny wrinkled with lines on her face and withered away close to 90. Laying on a bed, hair white as snow and looked like a prune. She was dying. And out of her body emerged to the supernatural eye her soul which was so beautiful and young and blonde haired and blue eyed and uh, just radiant like an angel's. Just perfectly formed in every way. Why? Her soul was born again, redeemed of incorruptible seed. There wasn't a corruptible portion on her spirit, not a spot on her garment. She just left that old carcass that looked like a prune. She stepped right on into the glory world. Some angels standing around. And while they talked, my mama walked. 
through heaven's open door. Say hallelujah. <laughs> she was at the epitome and at the utopia, at the very height of her youthfulness and her beauty and her strength and even more so. I don't think there was a time in her life she could have been more fit than that moment when she emerged from the shell. Say hallelujah. Don't that thrill you? That's the fellow I'm glorying in, said Paul. There ain't nothing in this old carcass to glory in. I have to beat him under. I have to hold him down. I have to be careful that after I preach to others, I myself become a castaway. I have to crucify this flesh. I have to hold him behind the cross and cause him to live in a basket and keep the lid on me. And God don't blow my cover. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. If I've been a basket case just one verse ago, but right now I feel myself leaving. God let me down, but now he's catching me up. If you ever get let down, don't worry, God will let you catch up. And in the catch up, Paul got caught up. And after being let down, now he was being caught up. Brother, you can't hope to grow if you don't die. You can't hope to expand if you don't prune yourself a little bit. Say amen. Prune ruthlessly, the direction said on the little tree that came in the mail. My dad says to my mother, Careful, you're going to kill that tree. No, said my mother. The direction said, Prune ruthlessly. And so when she got all through clipping all them branches, there wasn't nothing there but a daub of a stump. She planted it, but in a year's time, it was in full bloom with branches and buds and blossoms, and even bore fruit the first year. Why? Because the direction said, prune ruthlessly. Say hallelujah. Whoa, let's thank God for the basket cases that are here tonight. Hallelujah to God. Whoa, glory to God. Cut up only after you're let down. Hey, you feel like a basket case? Thank God God's going to bring you out of the basket when the time's right and you're going to accomplish something for God like the spies did, like David did, like Moses did, and like Paul did. They was all in a basket. They was all basket cases. Say hallelujah. Whoa, but brother, when you come out of the basket and you've hit the bottom and the lid springs and out you come, there's time for you to be caught up. The time is right for you to be translated. Even now, you're going to be caught up higher than you was ever let down. You're going to surpass the point where you was when you was let down. When you're caught up, you go to that level and beyond that level too. Hallelujah. At a higher, at a higher level. He said, why? I got caught up. I left the body just like I left the basket. God took me out of the basket. Then God took me out of the body. When I was caught up, I saw unspeakable things. It was not lawful for a man to utter. I wanted to talk about it. I was forbidden. I did not have permission to talk about it. Besides, if I had wanted to describe what I experienced and saw when he caught me up, I couldn't have done it anyhow. There are no words in the Greek. No words in the Hebrew, no words in the English, in the Latin, or any other language on earth to describe the phenomenal things that I witnessed while I was there. And when I was there, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for letting me down. Thank you, O Lord, for making a basket case out of me. Thank God. I was almost berserk and out of my mind. I was facing death. There was no other place to go. I had hit the lowest. But there's no farther down to go when you hit the lowest. And he pulled off the lid, took me out of the basket, took me out of the body, took me into the third heaven. And now I've got things in my spirit that I'll never forget, and yet I can't explain them. Hallelujah. Oh, brother, I found out salvation was right. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Sit in my seat just thinking it all. When they all started to pray, powerful from heaven, I fell on the floor. I prayed and God had his way. Hallelujah. Now that I know... And I won't have to doubt. I got an experience that night. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Of course, I can't talk about it either. There's no way to explain it. It's just better felt than tell. <laughs> Hallelujah. I found out salvation was right. And in the gospel and in God's word, if you're a basket case tonight and God's letting you down, if you've been having that let down feeling, it could be God doing it to you. Don't blame the devil 
for everything. God's letting some of these things happen so you can get out of the basket. Get out of the body. Get out of old self. Go higher than you ever been before. Get an experience that you can't even explain, although you know it's real. Hallelujah. No sense me trying to describe it to you, said Paul. No sense me trying to explain it to you. It's impossible. But I'll tell you this much about it. I got it. How many have got it tonight? Have you really got it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Remember, when God lets you down, then he catches you up. Let down and caught up. How many wants to be let down so you can be caught up? Blessed and holy is he that have part of the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Thank God. I'm praying my first prayer of faith right now. I want to pray for every basket case here tonight that's got that let down feeling. Why don't you just stand to your feet? You might get caught up tonight. Every soul that's bound, discouraged, in bondage, rise up. God will catch you up. You that's living in a basket, you that's got a lid on you, nobody knows you're there. Thank God he didn't embarrass you. But if you don't blow your lid, God won't blow your comfort. While you're in there tonight, it might just be your time to be taken out. And when you are, you will not only be taken out, you will be taken up. Thank God I'm going up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Let every basket case be delivered tonight and caught up to the place where God would have you. If it's not heaven tonight, let it be the next thing to it. Have a little heaven to go to heaven in. The Holy Ghost is a down payment on heaven. The earnest of your inheritance, the anointing of God's Spirit is a taste of what heaven's going to be like. Thank God. God stir every soul here tonight. Heal every basket case. Glory to God. Deliver every basket case and take them higher. Grander, further, far beyond the wildest dreams. Above and beyond the call of duty shalt thou draw them, saith the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Wonderful Jesus. Blessed be God. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Anybody get out of the basket yet? Anybody that's been let down, caught up yet? Hey, if you feel yourself being lifted up in the spirit, then that means you're out of the basket because you're not going down no more. You're not all hidden away and covered up no more. Expose yourself and shout glory. Say, Lord, here am I. I don't mind anybody knowing where I'm at. I'm leaving this world. I'm headed to the third heaven. Not the first, not the second, but the third heaven. I'm no longer a basket case. I'm a candidate for the rapture of the church. Oh, I'm headed up. Hallelujah. Oh, oh blessed is he that is invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah to God. Oh, glory. There's been some great basket cases down through the years, but I don't think any there's one went behind you basket cases here tonight that God has caught up. And everyone said, thank God he's reached me. He's reached me. Hallelujah. There's a sweet, whoa, sweet spirit in this place. And I know it is the spirit of the Lord there are sweet expressions on each face tell you know him in the fullness of his word Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us, fill of our love, who for each blessing. We give thy name the praise, 
without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Oh, we haven't left this place yet and I'm already revived. Sweet Holy Stay right here with me Filling up full of thy love And for each blessing mm, We give our daily praise Without a doubt we'll know That we have been revived we shall leave this place. Oh. Dear the Holy Spirit, are you out of your basket? Are you climbing Jacob's ladder? Are you a level higher? Ooh, there's been some basket cases in the past. But nothing to compare to some that's already been delivered tonight and those who shall yet be delivered tonight in this service. Glory to God. Power of God's on you, little sister. Come down here. I can't never get away from someone's got the power of God on them. The Father worketh hitherto and I work. That means where the Spirit's moving, said Jesus, is where I go move. I wouldn't pray for a dry hide over here if the Holy Ghost was moving on somebody over there. I'd go over there and pray because the Spirit's doing the work. The anointing's breaking the yoke. I believe God's going to do something for you tonight. Amen. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Thank God. Look at me now. There comes to you a pressure that forms in your head. In your head. Now, you've been healed before. God's touched you many times. But the pressure in your head is a strip only about this wide. And it lies in behind your eyes. In behind your eyes. God's going to break this thing behind your eyes. And your eyes are going to be healed tonight. The pressure in the head, pushing on them, is going to quit. Amen. You want that? Yes. Take a step of faith. Hold your hands up. You have this thing that feels like a drawing in your eyes, like they're pulling on you. God's taking it out. Look at me now. The second thing that's happening to you in this second prayer of faith, since we've already prayed the first prayer, which was a mass prayer for souls who lived in baskets, for too long. There's a sinus stoppage through your head that's going to clear up in your nasal breathing. You need that? Yes. Take a step of faith. Hallelujah. Thirdly, you have slight weakness in your wrist. In your wrist, especially your right wrist here. The grip is weak and sometimes it cracks on you. Cracks on you. God is going to heal it. Small thing might as well be healed. Glory to God. Now there's something bigger. God is touching you through the female area of your body and the lower abdomen. All suffering that you've had heretofore will now cease tonight. You'll have it no more. Go where to go. You believe it? One more step of faith. We may have it all by then. Hallelujah. Go where to God. Look at me now. Again, and there's a place that is sensitive in your chest, which is personal. In the air of the breast, God's taking it out. It will now dissolve. And it has been this way for the past three years that when any condition of the breast was revealed by the Spirit, it always disappeared upon the prophet. Uh, how's your faith out there? Y'all believe in God? You believe in God too? Yes. You're free in the Spirit. You've had condemnation. You've been condemned God's taking your condemnation out of your heart and your mind tonight. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Yes. Your eyes are head of silence for wrist. There's something cracking in your wrist. You feel that? Huh? <laughs> Quit now. Quit now. Hallelujah. Female condition. Be restored. The center of the spot from the air of the breath. Loose to God. 
Everybody said, Blessed be God, it's down. Oh, glory. Everyone said, I'm happy now. The sister in the purple, come next, be the next one in the line. You believe God's touched you? Yes. Now, in spite of all your teardrops, could you breathe through your nasal now and see if it's open? Yes, it is. Really? How does your eyes feel? Great. Now, look at the friendly folks. They're the ones that's waving at you. Are they any brighter to your vision? Yes, they are. Now, you've had this little matter in behind the eyes, Bob and Yai. Mm-hmm. How long would you say it's been there? I don't know, a while, I'd say. A while. Could be any period of time if it was a while. But it's gone now for a long while. That is, till Jesus comes. Depression, see if you're so sensitive at all in the lower track. No. Try here. On the sore and sensitive spot, examine yourself. Thanks. Nothing. Nope. I know God shields you, and you know it. Hallelujah. Do you really believe the things that's happened to you tonight? Yes. You do? Yes. Well, God bless you. Go in peace. Faith has made you whole. Can God heal you too? Yes, He can. He's healed you before. Yes, He has. You have a dry tickle in your throat. Is that right? You also have barnacle condition in your lungs, in your breathing. Heavy, yes. Thirdly, you have sensitivity of your skin. So like a skin allergy that bothers you, you will never clear up. Yes, I do. Take a step of faith. Is that all you want or you want some more? I want some more. <laughs> I had a feeling this would turn into a hoggish congregation before it was too far into the deliverance part of the service. Your blood is low, tired blood to you. Yes, it is. Huh? Yes, it is. It's really, it's anemia, anemic. God's healing it. You have a weakness in your vision of your eyes. Yes, I do. <laughs> you want your 2020 sight back to read by. Yes, I do. Take a step of faith toward me now. You've had a cramp moving through the lower abdomen. Yes, I have. This thing is leaving you. It don't even matter what it is. It's what matters is what it's not. It's not there now. Hallelujah. In the marvelous name of Jesus. Lucia. <laughs> Receive sight in thine eyes. The blood is rising now. Take this attack of spastic spasm. Gone. Hallelujah to God. Throat. I'd healed. Everyone said it's done. Boy. Turn and look at the friendly folks. They're the ones that's waving at us. Did they clear up any? Praise God. Yes, thank you. Yes, and you'll read by the same token as you see them afar. Praise God, thank you, yes. Breathe deep and see how your bronchitis, your particle tubes are. Oh, I can breathe so easy, thank you, Jesus. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's like a fiery warm heat run all through you. Oh, I feel so warm inside. Yes, thank you, Jesus. That's the sign of your blood transfusion. You're no longer anemic. <laughs> Hallelujah! Rakashaya la Mahasana.